cannot believe what I've just witnessed. Man on a bicycle has come in and bought a car. Man on bike never buys a car. This video is sponsored by Vehicle Score. Vehicle Score is a free vehicle checking service which you can visit by going to vehiclescore.co.uk. Simply type in a registration number and you will get a unique score to your vehicle. You can compare your score to the average in Vehicle Score's database. It's full of free useful information such as the mileage tracker history. It gives you a comprehensive breakdown of your MOT history for things like advisories and also wear and tear items. It gives you performance data, an estimated valuation, an estimated lifespan of the vehicle compared to others like it. It's full of free, useful information. Also, as well, they also have their two new features, including the new car insurance tip section to help you save money on your next car insurance quote, and their new AI mechanic, which will help you if you have any issues with a car, trying to diagnose any faults or common issues you might be having with a particular vehicle. But it doesn't end there, because Vehicle Score also offer their paid checks. These checks start from less than a cup of coffee and will check to see things like if your vehicle has ever been involved in an accident, whether it's been written off by an insurance company to a Category N or a Category S. Maybe it's an unrecorded write-off so it's gone for a salvage auction and you weren't aware of it. It'll also check to see if your vehicle's ever been imported or exported, ever been used as a taxi, has outstanding finance. They offer some of the most comprehensive checks out there and all this information is assured with their £10,000 data guarantee. The paid checks are some of the most comprehensive price out there and it gets better because you guys get a discount. Simply use the promo code CARUK20 to get 20% off any of those paid checks. But remember guys, the basic service is completely free and it's constantly evolving. So make sure you download the Vehicle Score app, get yourself over to vehiclescore.co.uk and give them a try. Hi there, welcome back to the channel and to another Car Pitch update video here at the Car UK channel. So, what has been going on over the last sort of week or so? Well, quite a lot, in fact, really. We had a slow week at the beginning, but we have managed to get some sales in towards the latter end of the week before we closed for the Easter break. We've also managed to get some more cars on sale because of the fact we've got now a Valator full-time in-house. We've managed to get a lot of cars not only on sale on the pitch, We've also managed to update the Facebook page. Everyone keeps saying, you're not updated the Facebook page, you've not got anything on. I keep getting hassled about it. So I had to sort of uh, basically get me at arse in gear this week and get some stuff on sale and crucially on the Facebook page. Anyway, let's go have a look round because we've had a few new vehicles on board as well uh, and we can see what's been going on. And also I can tell you about what has happened. Something amazing has happened. Something you're never going to believe and I'll have to explain what I mean later on. So anyway, let's get ourselves on the pitch. Okay, right, let's go and have a look around. It's, um, well, it's near closing time now, so we we'll, uh, should have be uh, relatively quiet. Although the wind is up, I've got the uh, muffler on, but I do apologise if the wind is uh, coming through in the background. I'll try my best to reduce the noise out. Also, apologies if I sound a bit different at the moment. I've got a bit of uh, the old lurgy, so I'm not uh, feeling too well, but we'll press on nonetheless. Quickly, before we have a look outside what's uh, been occurring out here, quickly show you this uh, little Punto. This is a little uh, Fiat Punto we've had in. Um, it's a little 1.2 petrol. This is a part exchange. To be honest with you, we're just weighing up whether to do anything with it. It's not a particularly bad thing, drives really well, um, but it does want a little bit of work on it. I've noticed it wants a little bit of welding down here on this sill here. It's been previously welded before, and it's a bit of a, well, crap job, shall we say. I don't know who's welded it, Stevie Wonder, but it's an appalling job and it wants sort of uh, redoing. So I'm just weighing up whether or not it's something we want to get involved in. So. It's not too bad underneath, actually, for a punter of this age. They're usually in worse condition than this, but it's not a bad one. And as a cheapie, maybe, something we could just sort of turn around and maybe it's like a cheap 1195 car, if we can get it looking structurally sound and sort of repair this sill properly underneath and get it all bright, it might be worth doing. It's only coming in as a couple of hundred pound type part exchange and does drive rather well. So maybe there's some life left in the old dog yet. Um, I don't think particularly mileage or anything like that. I have driven it, it does drive very well. A couple of keys of it. Um, he says what the miles is. Let's find out. There's the old trip button on the side on these, aren't they? It has done 101,000 miles, which for a car that's what? Nearly 20 years old, 18 years old, it's not too bad. Starts up first, turn of the key. You now engine lights on. It does drive actually up reasonably all well. Um, and like I said, they're a bit old hat now, these Puntos. We sell more the Grande Puntos than the sort of older ones like these. But they weren't bad cars, in fact, to be honest with you. And as a cheapie for someone, if we can get that looking right and, you know, look to think that someone can get a good few years out of it again, then we should be really going on with it. But we'll see. You know, you just don't know until we sort of press on underneath. It might be opening a can of worms up trying to repair that. If not, unfortunately, it'll end up at the graveyard. But um, 
it'd be nice if we could rectify that as a little cheapy for someone. Outside, what's been going on? Well, we'll start off uh, recovery truck. Got a little uh, Suzuki SX4, which was mentioned a few weeks ago. We bought this in the uh, the pack of eight, if I call it, of vehicles that we purchased with things like that. I go over there and a few other little bits and bobs we bought. Um, this is the uh, SX4 4x4 one, uh, which I didn't know was a four-wheel drive, actually, one until I bought it, which was uh, a bit uh, daft on my part, really. I probably wouldn't have bought it if I known it was a four-wheel drive one because you just open yourself up to risk there. However, I bought it nonetheless. Does need a little bit of work doing to it. It's not, it was down really as having a bad clutch in it um, on the report, which I was aware of. Uh, I've since been in it and drove it on the ramp and decided it's not the clutch that's the issue. It's got bad gear linkages, which is a common thing on the SX4. So it definitely needs a set of gear linkages. It definitely needs going to paint. It definitely needs a ruck of trim bits. For some reason, someone has butchered all the trim bits all on them. These are common for coming off these little uh, side trims on the SX4, these clips. So I need to sort them out. You can buy these trim bits anyway, so it's not the end of the world. You can actually buy them new, actually, from Suzuki, so we're going to have to have a look at that. But that's uh, one for another day. It's a bit shabby at the moment, so we'll come back to that when it's looking a bit better. Um, on the pitch, well, we've got quite a lot of stuff go on sale, and uh, we've even sold a few as well, which, for the sin of fact, the weather's been pretty awful all week, I'm quite pleased with. We'll start with ones we've probably noticed on the Facebook page, anyone who's sort of eagle-eyed. Toyota Igo. This lasted about 24 hours on the page. Beautiful thing, this. Really nice, presentable car. Little five-door one, high-spec thing. It's got rev counter in it, sat nav, glove box. Oh, it's just fully loaded for an Igo. Sold straight away. I think we put it up for, is it $36.95? Full service history. Uh, bar one service, all from Toyota. Well, there was a recent service that wasn't from the main agents, but I mean, it doesn't really that matter that much. These are really solid, bulletproof things. Lovely car, bright thing, nice colour. It was going to sell straight away. So that's good. That went straight away. Like I said, we picked that, put that up on the Wednesday, took a deposit on it on the Thursday. A uh, gentleman from Scotland, a subscriber to the channel, is coming down uh, next week to uh, hopefully uh, finalise the deal. So we'll see how that progresses next week. We've also managed to get the Suzuki Swift on sale. That's just a little cheapy. We put a clutch in that. Uh, recently, that's a nice thing, it's come up well. Got a few little bits to it that still need doing to it. Um, I need to sort out on it, but overall, it's pretty much there now. So, it says just got to finish off a few bits in the week. I need to have a look at the window on one side, it's a bit temperamental, and there's a couple of little trim bits as well I've got to put on that. But overall, does drive well. Nice little cheapy car. Uh, cash car, come back to that in a minute. Got the Asher Tour on sale. We saw this on the channel a week or so ago. Uh, so, an update on. Had to go to paint this. We had a uh, rock of paint done on it. It was a bumper, which is a bit edgy in places, but it's come up really well. Bad boy Corsa there. Uh, nice thing, 1600 petrol, one former keeper, got a history of it. Nice Astra Tora, up for 3995. For some reason, my colleague has left a bottle of water on there, which is nice of him. Um, I shall be having a word with him about that on Monday. Quickly show you this, we just landed as well yesterday. Been there on the auctions, I've been really busy actually buying on the auctions. I'll show you what I've uh, been buying just in a sec actually, I've got the invoices through. Uh, this is uh, a 2006 Volkswagen Polo. Now, I get asked a lot, why don't you buy lots of German cars? What's your problem with them? I don't have a problem with them. No, I do have a problem with them. They're just so expensive to buy. Even at this level that I'm selling at, they're still expensive to buy. And there is a good reason for that. It's because cars like this are just better quality and they've just got a sort of a brand recognition that people sort of admire and sort of obviously want. And there's a classic example. This is a 2006 plate Polo. It's done 103,000 miles and just look at it. You know, look at the plastics in this. Look at the quality of how well these plastics have stood up to the test of time. If this was a Fiesta or a Corsa of this year, honestly, it would be in bits. It really would be, it's particularly a Corsa, and that's really its main competitor. Um, so that's, that's, that's the main thing. So you, when you're buying stuff like this, it's really difficult to get it at sort of handy money. So when I give you an example, I give £950 for that car in an auction, and that's about right. That's what you'd pay for one of those. That's the sort of cap value for one of those cars. Retail on it, believe it or not, is supposed to be £2195, which to me just seems balmy. And it's not, mine's not going up for 21.95. It's a 1.4 petrol, it's done 103,000 miles. Yes, all right, it's, it's a Polo, so it's gonna be worth more than a course of an equivalent age or Fiesta, but it is an old car, let's be realistic. So I'm gonna probably price that up. I think I've put a board in it actually, ready to go in tomorrow. Uh, about 1,800 quidish mark, I think it's going up for 18.95. That's pretty much where it's at to me, to be honest with you. That's where I see it at. I've got a little Suzuki Swift that's probably a year or so newer. 
that's about a couple hundred pounds cheaper. That's where I see that at. That's a car that's probably a little bit better quality than a Suzuki Swift. Um, obviously everyone's got different preferences but it's a bit better quality so it's going to be a little bit more money but that's really where it's at if I start putting that up at 21.95 it just looks too dear you mean 21.95 you're starting to get like courses 0959 plate courses or you know later on even fiestas and stuff I mean look at that I mean I'm not comparing the two cars they're not the same cars by any stretch of the imagination but there's a 63 plate Chevrolet Spark there it's two and a half grand or whatever it's going up for not far off two and a half grand you know, this is like, what, 600 quid cheaper, but it's like nearly 10 years new, older. But this is the thing, you, you, you compare it side by side by people who probably aren't very car-minded, it just doesn't look value. But those who know that Polo's what they like and the reliability of them, then they understand it and they're willing to pay that little bit more margin for a, a half-decent, well-built car, which is what the Polos are. I do like them, I just wish I could get more of them. Uh, this is a 1.4 petrol, by the way, they do a 1.4 petrol, they do a 1.2 petrol. They do diesels as well. Occasionally you drop on a diesel, but most of them are petrols. The most common is the 1.2. The 1.2 is a good engine, isn't reliable as the 1.4. The 1.2 suffers with burnt out valve problems. It's very common. It's not the end of the world. They can be fixed for it's not, not terrible money, but they are quite common of a certain age for burning out valves. Later ones, you suffer with chain problems as well. I've seen a few of them, particularly 59 onwards. It seems to have issues there. Um, so the 1.4 probably is the most reliablest one. The 1.2 is more economical. Some would say it drives better. But the 1.4 is a decent engine, it's old school, and it's reliable. That's the main thing. I've seen these with 160, 70,000 miles on, still going strong. The, the, they are built to last. So quality, and that's what you pay for with a Volkswagen. You get a little bit of quality that you're just not going to get out of a Corsa. Here's an example. 59 plate Corsa. Done less miles. It's done 70,000 miles and the bumpers are hanging off. All the clips are broke. Typical Corsa when they've got corrosion here. I have to have these painted so often. We have to take the bumper off and have them all quarters painted. They're just a pain in the arse, these cars. They're popular and people want them, which is why we stock them and sell them. But they're just not as well built. That's the thing. Then And, you know, that's probably going to be 23.95 car when it's done. A few hundred pounds more but a lot newer and some people it's very difficult to try and convince them that slightly older car with better quality is going to be better than a newer car that's mm, a little bit bitty shall we say but anyway that's that's enough of that that's the polo it's a nice thing clean thing got a little bit to do on it a few tires and bushes and stuff that's probably going to need doing i think i need to do wheel balancing on it as well but let's say it's only just come in so we'll, we'll catch up with that next week so i'm actually quite pleased this week we managed to get quite a bit up on sale quickly mention the cash guy now the cash guy has sold which i'm really pleased about little nissan cash guy i think we've mentioned this before we bought this again a few weeks ago in that pack of eight from breeze aston barkley it's a sort of a hit and miss color I'm not sure many people would like it it's a bit of a like i said marmite color i quite like it actually it's like a i don't know what you could call it is it a suede i don't know a beige it's a beige isn't it so go with, i like suede i'm going with suede but um, it's a nice thing on 07 plate one six petrol not too bad on the mileage, it's about 90,000 miles. Have just had to put a new battery on it uh, a few days ago and some new rear shockers because they were awful bouncing around everywhere. But other than that, it isn't too bad. It's had brakes on it recently, not by us, which is good. At least there's been maintenance there. And it's come up really well. Had to get a wing painted on it. I think it was this wing here. It was just a little bit of marked there around here. So I've had that all repainted. And it's come up reasonably well. In fact, it looks even beautiful now. It's got a bit of Diggler's Mist on it. But like I said, it's sold. And what the interesting thing is, is that why this is sold and who it's sold to. You see, this car was sold to a man on a bicycle, which is a little bit of a joke we have in the motor trade. You see, there are two things in the trade, maybe sort of superstition, as we say. The first one is, is that, I'll give you an example. The first one is, is sort of a golden rule is, the man who comes in waving his arms around, sort of saying, I'm here to buy a car sort of basically telling you he's going to come buy a car and he's got the money and I'm, I'm a cash buyer buying today the golden rule is is that he ain't buying a car that's rule number one man that comes in waving his arms around saying he's buying a car ain't buying a car and that doesn't mean you're rude to him because if you are rude to him he will make sure that he slates you on every single trust pilot facebook google review you can find to make sure you're aware that you didn't give him the full attention that he thinks he deserves to waste your time for half an hour when he's got no intentions of buying a car. That's the golden rule number one. Man who comes in, eccentric, waving his arms around, saying he's here to buy a car, who's going to sell me a car? Avoid like the plague, but don't be rude to him. 
That's golden rule number one. Golden rule number two in the motor trade is man on bike never buys a car. That's golden rule number two. And what I mean by that is, is that you'll always get a man in, usually on a Saturday afternoon, 10 to five, on his bicycle, he'll come in, pop it up somewhere, sometimes on the floor in the middle of the pitch, often on a car itself, sort of leaning on it, scratching it, and I've seen that happen a few times, some dealerships. He will then basically waste 40 minutes of your time as you're trying to sort of close up and go home, trying out every small car to try and get his bicycle in the boot of it, knowing full well that it's not going to fit. And then we'll give up and tell you that he's going to go home and think about it, but he's definitely going to buy a car from you. And then, do you know what happens? They never see him again. They are absolute time wasters, man on bicycle. It's well known in the trade. Go and ask a motor trader about man on bike and you'll just sort of get that laugh and grunt because we all know that man on bike never buys a car. However, that theory has been proven wrong this week because man on the bike did buy a car. He came in, he spoke to my colleague actually, walked around the cash guy, I clocked him first, immediately thought, he's on a bicycle, I ain't getting involved. So my colleague dealt with him, went through all the motions, he's liking the car, he's getting the boot open, He's trying to see if he can get his bike in it. You're thinking, yeah, we've, we've seen this before. We know where this is going. He then comes in, my colleague does, after this sort of the guy's been around it and looked at it. And he's told me, my colleague has said to me, definitely got an interest in the car. He says he's going home. He's going to get a deposit and he's coming back and going to buy the car. To which my response is, mm, okay, if you want to go down that route, if you want to waste your time with him, no problem. But this is man on bike. And as we know, man on bike doesn't buy a car. Well, I was wrong. There you go. I've been proven wrong. Man on bike came back with deposit and bought the car, which I mean, I've never, I couldn't believe it. That never happens. I mean, literally, I've never seen that happen. I mean, I, I told a friend of mine the other day, actually, in the trade, that a man did come on the car pitch and bought a car, and he just said I was a liar. He said he wanted photographic proof. So I'll, uh, I'll have to try and get video of him of when he comes and picks it up, hopefully, with his bicycle, and uh, see if we can uh, prove that it's no longer a myth. So anyway, I'll keep you posted on that one because until Man on Bike actually comes and picks the car up and pays for it in full, he hasn't technically bought the car yet. So we've still got time to cock the old Man on Bicycle. So we'll see what happens there. I shall keep you posted uh, and to see if the myth has finally been debunked. But on a serious note, it's been a pretty decent week, to be honest with you. Very quiet at the beginning of the week, but since then it's picked up quite all right. Today's Friday, Good Friday. I've come in basically to do some paperwork. Had a little bit of interest, actually. but The gates weren't actually open, but we had people sneaking on through the side gates. They've been on, and I've got a few sort of irons in the fire. But tomorrow should be a half-decent day. We've got a few people coming in. We've got test drive booked in. So let's see what happens. Hopefully, we can sort of finish off March well, and then we get ourselves into April. I suspect it to go quiet, really, next week with the sort of the holidays kicking in and the school holidays. You expect to see that. So if we can finish the next few days well, I think March will actually be a pretty decent month uh, on the old uh, profitability front for us, which is great news. But before I go, I'll actually show you what I've been buying, actually, because I've had a few uh, purchases this week from the auction. OK, right, well, so what have I been buying this week? I haven't got any footage of these, unfortunately, at the moment, because I didn't actually take the camera with me, stupidly enough. Uh, although we are going to some uh, more auction content in the next week or so, including some new auction houses. So you make sure you check that out as well, because it's going to be coming uh, next week. Uh, I've been buying the following vehicles. One of them, you probably won't know what it actually is, because I wasn't sure myself. I bought myself a little 13 plate Kia Rio, which is coming in next week, which I'm really chuffed about. I've also bought myself a Vauxhall Viva, not the old Vauxhall Viva from 1970s. It's a new Vauxhall Viva, um, which is a 65 plate, which is coming in next week. I will do a video on that Vauxhall Viva when it comes in because there's a little bit of a story behind it, why I bought it. It's something a little bit sort of, well, controversial, shall we say, about it. So we'll do we'll, uh, to cover that in another video because it's an, actually a really cheap car, but there's a good reason for that. So we'll talk about more about that next week. I've also bought a Chevrolet Trax. Now, I know what you're thinking. What is a Chevrolet Trax? I didn't know what a Chevrolet Trax was either when I read it in the catalogue. But when I saw it, I thought to myself, it looks identical to a Vauxhall Mocha, which is exactly what it is. It's a Vauxhall Mocha. It's a 1.6 petrol. It's identical car. I actually say, actually, in fairness, it looks better than a Vauxhall Mocha. It's certainly a better colour, although it does need paint. It's a nice blue colour. And interior on it looked a bit better as well, but we'll see. I might even do a video on that because that is a really strange car. The Vauxhall Mock is quite popular and are really good sellers, but I usually get nowhere near them. I can struggle to buy them. So to pick up a Chevrolet Trax, which is the next best thing, I actually think that could be a decent little earner. And I've not paid much for it either. I'm going to give about 1,300 quid for it, but it probably does need about probably huh, four or 500 quid worth of paint on it. So let's just watch that space before we uh, get a bit giddy about profit. 
Uh, lastly, I've also won a Hyundai i10 as well. Uh, that's the little bread and butter car. Uh, I also picked up a Citroen C1 in blue. That's going to be coming on board next week. We've got so many nice little cars coming on board. Little first timers as well. Little cheapies, sort of stuff between the sort of two to four grand mark. The sort of stuff we sell every single week. Also as well, I've got some new content that I'm going to try out on you guys next week. Some more sort of in-depth review, if you like, of cars. Particularly sort of what I'm looking for when I'm buying them. Sort of give you sort of all the issues and faults that you might need to check out for on a particular make and model. I think it'd be really useful for people, particularly if they're looking to buy that particular model or maybe if you're looking to start out buying and selling you want to know what to sort of look out for when buying and selling these cheapy cars what you sort of need to looking out for to make sure you don't make too many of the wrong choice or wrong decisions uh, so I thought I'd give you my knowledge pass it on to you guys and do that in a sort of uh, more in-depth video so I'm not sure what we're going to start on next week I'll probably just pull something off the pitch and sort of get my brain in gear when I've got rid of this flu and uh, maybe sort of uh, do like I said, an in-depth video. So hopefully you'll enjoy that. Something different, it'll be a bit more workshop content as well as we go underneath them, like I said, in more detail. I can actually pinpoint from my days of being underneath these particular cars, whether it's sort of repairing them or being an MOT tester for you know, the best part of what, 10, 12 years, I can tell you what you need to be looking out for. So I think it'll be really decent information that I can pass on to you, uh, which will be useful. So we'll see. Uh, thank you for watching uh, these videos, guys. I do appreciate it so much. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. And if you've been watching for many months now and you haven't liked and subscribed, what have you been doing? Press that like and subscribe button. So thanks again, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one.